Now, you've heard Chris Room's breakdown of today's time trial course, so not a great deal to add. It starts, as he says, on the Navarra motor racing circuit, and once it leaves for the open roads, there's not much on the route except for the time checks at 13 and 27.9 kilometres. Right, before we get to the racing, those AG2R withdrawals I mentioned, they came as a result of these slightly indistinct pictures, which nonetheless clearly show Alexandre Genies and Nico Dens holding onto the team car on stage 15. The team issued an apology as well as pulling the two out of the race, although interestingly they haven't taken any action against the team director who was in the car and obviously helped them do it. The race organisers have, though, sort of. They've kicked the car off the race, leaving AG2R with only one. Après, ils connaissent tous les deux la réglementation. Ils savent qu'il n'y a pas le droit de, de s'accrocher à aucun des véhicules. Ça fait partie de, du règlement et que ça mérite une exclusion. Donc, ils méritent largement ce qui leur est arrivé. Euh, malheureusement, avec eux, ils entraînent la voiture. Et, euh, et c'est ce qui est dommageable pour leurs collègues pour la suite de l'épreuve. C'est-à-dire qu'il n'y aura pas de voiture pour les aider ni à l'arrière ni à l'échapper devant. Now, as well as the AG2R pair, BMC lost a couple of riders to injury and sickness on the rest day. Kilian Franchini and Rohan Dennis, the first red jersey of this Vuelta, and a man who would have been among the favourites for today's stage. In his absence, Tobias Ludvigsson of FTJ in Sweden set the best early time of 48 minutes 7 seconds. Roman Bardet was never likely to beat that, but even less so when he crashed on one of the bends of the circuit and needed a bike change. So, with the race leader warming up in the air-conditioned comfort of the expanding Sky Pantechnicon, we join commentary with the man in ninth on the ramp. Every day is an opportunity for Alberto Contador, whose welter was almost sunk under the waterline on stage three into Andorra. He finished two minutes and 33 seconds down on that day, down in 30th place. Well, two and a half weeks of racing have resulted in him rising ever so slowly into the top ten, starts the day in ninth position, has got time to make up on everyone ahead of him, obviously, and some very, very clear targets in his sight. The likes of Michael Woods, Fabio Aru, Miguel Angel Lopez, even Esteban Chavez under threat from Contador today. What can he do? He has been time-trialling brilliantly so far this year, Contador, some major results. Uh, under his belt already, some very high placings in good races, like a second place in Paris-Nice in the time trial. A tour of the Basque country in the individual time trial there. He finished seventh, Dauphiné, seventh, Tour de France, stage 20 in Marseille in the baking heat. He finished sixth, so he's still got it on his day, and he will be motivated today, David. Yeah, he really will be. He's having a, a, an amazing race so far, and uh, I think he's gaining... I mean, he's always had so much respect from not only the public but uh regards his racing style um and i think it's great to see him go out in the way we will always remember the way he raced is that he races aggressively um as he said he'd rather risk losing everything than sitting back and just trying to defend something um and you know that the sport needs riders like that and it's been the sport's been built on on stories of of riders that, that race like that so I think today, again, is he is chasing, trying to chase that podium place, and it, it's in, imperative that he does a great time trial today. Luis Leon Sanchez now, just a couple of hundred metres to go, and he is, I don't think he's going to catch him on the line, but Luis Leon Sanchez, uh, his time's OK, not even close to Tobias Ludvigsen, and uh, he stops the clock one minute and 42 seconds down on Tobias Ludvigsen, so that's, a, that's an indication of just how good that time from the Swedish uh, national time trial champion was. Now, Fabio Aru could have done with a few climbs in this individual time trial. It was actually a very important part of his win in 2015. The last individual time trial of that race was lumpier than people expected. And riders like uh, Rodriguez and Aru actually thrived on that circuit and rode really well. But conventional wisdom would suggest that Aru is going to struggle here and he might well be losing time. To the likes of Alberto Contador, who is four minutes ahead of him on the road already, and who knows, to Michael Woods, who is breathing down his neck just two seconds down. Fabio Aru has started, and after him, well, the air gets very thin as we rise eventually towards Chris Froome in the red skin suit of the leader of the Vuelta. Now, Miguel Angel Lopez in the start house, in the white jersey, the white skin suit of the organisation. The red numbers on his back, meaning that he is the best-placed uh, young rider, but also in the white jersey of the uh, combination competition. Now, this is, uh, in many ways, 
possibly the most interesting uh, of the leading contenders in the GC in terms of this time trial, uh, David, because we simply don't know enough about Miguel Angel Lopez uh, to know what to expect from this time trial. He's got some good results, obviously favours the hillier, more mountainous courses, but uh, we just don't know, I don't think, quite how well he's going to go. No, we really don't. It's, um, it is a bit of a mystery, uh, as we see his teammate, Fabio Aru, here, who's... Uh, who it means like he's riding a bit of a too big a gear at one point, but um, we'll see how that plays out. But yeah, for Miguel Angel Lopez, it is a bit of a mystery for all of us. We know he's on flying form. Alberto Constor evidently is going fast, if this is right. That's 12 seconds faster than Ludwigsen at this very early stage in the in the time trial. Is uh, well, it's a pretty stunning ride to be, to be honest. When we see the difference he's already put into other riders, Ludwigsen at the finish, uh, that that would point towards Alberto Constor on a true flyer at the moment. Now, one new name, Colombian, on the road. And now a slightly more familiar name in Esteban Chavez. Orica Scott have uh, come to this Vuelta with huge expectations for the general classification. They've seen both the Yates tin twins fall away and fall short of their ambitions to ride to stage victory so far, although the coming few days of climbing will present them with further opportunities. Chavez is holding on to his GC challenge, though. I don't think he's going to win the Vuelta. Uh, but how high up can he finish and uh, what kind of losses or gains can he sustain or make today? And that's a new site to the Vuelta, the Sky Hub, which uh, in this configuration at least resembles a stage and a big crowd gathering there to watch Chris Froome get focused, get his legs spinning, get his heart rate up and get prepared for his time trial, quite publicly as it happens. Now, we talked about surprise packages on the Vuelta. I think you definitely have to put Wilco Kelderman in that category. He's got through the Andalusian Mountains, the Sierra Nevada, and he is on the start ramp in a discipline he favours. He is a time trialist, Wilco Kelderman, as well as a climber. Very much like a kind of Tom Dumoulin in the making, if you like, the man from Sunweb. And uh, he has got some good results in individual time trials over the recent years, and he can make gains here. So we haven't seen Alberto Constor. I mean, something you can just tell when he's looking good. Actually, most uh, pro riders, you can tell when they're on good days and they just there's a, a certain fluidity about them and uh, energy. And Alberto Constor has really shown that. It's, uh, this is the Alberto Constor uh, at his best, if you like, in a time trial. Now here's another national champion. I was uh, somewhat surprised to read, actually. Ilnor Zakharin is the reigning national time trial champion of Russia, even though Katusha Alpacin hardly... Uh, shouting his uh, national jersey colours there, but he is. He does not like time trialling in the wet, we know that for sure, when he had a disastrous wet time trial in Chianti on the Giro d'Italia last year. And uh, at times he looks, uh, you know, a little bit Roman Bardet, like a little bit of a liability on a very technical, difficult course. But it'd be interesting to see how he goes. Now, Vincenzo Nibali probably wins the kit prize. I mean, look at that uh, Bahrain Merida outfit, golden helmet. One minute and one second down now after Sierra Nevada in the general classification. Off the start ramp, Nibali. Can he uh, hold on to his second place? Well, you would have thought so. He's got a healthy time advantage over Ilnor Zakharin in third place. One minute and seven seconds further back down. And... Uh, well, it's a big gap that he'd have to make up if he was going to threaten Chris Froome's red jersey. So Nibali would, I think, be happy with parity at the end of the day and just holding on to something like that kind of time gap to Chris Froome. I think he would be expecting, though, at the end of the day to sustain some sort of losses. Every time we go forward and the cameras pick out Alberto Contador, it just looks like he's motoring. All right, that <laughs> camera angle does tend to flatter you as you skitter across the tarmac there, but he just looks so committed. Yeah, he does. He's looking great. And uh, to, be, to be honest, everyone looks good these days. Everyone's got great positions, uh, similar equipment, uh, bike setups. And uh, it is, it does mean that they all do look quite similar. So that was the time check, it would, it would seem. It wasn't anything to 15, 18, but we've got nothing to show that against at the moment. Well, I tell you, if 15, 18 is what you're hearing, David, then 15, 23 was Tobias Ludwigsen's time. He is five seconds faster than Tobias Ludwigsen at the first checkpoint after 13K. So Contador is setting the new benchmark. Yeah, 15 minutes, 18 seconds, that's confirmed on race radio. So that means that he's uh, five seconds faster than Ludwigsen at that first time check. So that is, uh, he is officially on a flyer. Right, Chris Froome, all decked out in red. 
very, very close now to sealing the deal on the Vuelta. Finally for him. Off he goes, and this is to his favour. Chris Froome is the best time trialist of the GC contenders. If he holds his form together, he will do damage to all of their challenges. This is a big day and a big 40 kilometres for Chris Froome trying to hunt down that elusive victory on the Vuelta that so far he hasn't been able to claw his way. Will this be his day and what kind of advantage will he have at the end of it? So confirmation that Alberto Contador is five seconds faster than, uh, well, both Bob Jungels and Tobias Ludwigsen, who both set 15.23 through 13 kilometres. Matching them and bettering them, Alberto Contador is now punching up and into this little climb, uh, which rises for about three or four kilometres, flattens out, and then they will drop down towards the finish line, and extending his virtual advantage now to nine seconds over the pairing of Jungels and Ludwigsen. Ludwigsen held his form all the way to the line. Jungels weakened significantly in the second half of the time trial. And Nibali, now uh, on the road, that suggests that Nibali is now going faster on these very, very early uh, kilometres of this time trial than Chris Froome, which is one to keep an eye on at the very least. Now, Chris Froome did state publicly, as we go back to Froome, that there was a school of thought at least. I mean, he didn't show his hand or tell us emphatically and clearly exactly what tactic he was going to deploy, but he did flag up. Uh, at least the thought that if you go very, very deep here with the day to come, and specifically tomorrow with an absolutely brutal final climb up to the finish line, you might just pay for it. And with uh, slopes of 26% in the final climb tomorrow, 26%, uh, if the lights go out there and everything comes grinding to a halt, you could lose much more time on that climb tomorrow than you could possibly gain on the time trial today. So there's a school, there's an argument that you might want to ride at 90% rather than 100 so 11 seconds faster than anybody than Chris Froome at the moment. So that'll be encouraging for him, but at the same time, he knows that Chris Froome will be coming for him if Chris Froome is riding his normal race, um, which is hard to believe he's not. Um, I can't see him taking it easy uh, for tomorrow. It's just not, not something he does. And these guys are all so fit, they can recover from what is it's what, a 40, 50 minute effort. Uh, it's for a, a, a GC racer, that's something that they do repeatedly every day so it's uh, just doing take reeling it back a bit today doesn't seem like it would be the, the correct tactic so we go back to Wilco Keldon he's ripping into Contador's time now on the road and he is now approaching the intermediate or that is that's his time actually confirmed at the wow uh, 13k checkpoint and that's 15 dead well he really is uh, storming along here so that means he's uh, 23 seconds faster than Ludwigsen uh, so that's significant uh, after 15 minutes of racing. And that's very impressive reading. All right, there's some big hitters still to come, uh, likes of Nibali and uh, Chris Froome, of course, but that is a healthy advantage he has through 13K over Alberto Contador. And look how tightly everyone else is bunched. You don't take 18 seconds for free. Wow, look at the speed they're going down here. That's ridiculous. Over 80 for sure. It's just running out of gears. It's a slight descent with this it's like tailwind as well. It's. Uh, these are the sections where you almost need to sort of just rest a little bit because you, can, you reach a terminal velocity. There's just, you simply can't go any faster, so you, you need to just relax and, and go with that, not fight it too much and conserve the energy for when it does get harder again. If you do pick up an unexpected tailwind, David, and it kind of reveals that you might have got your gear selection just one tooth wrong, there can't be much that's more frustrating than that when the legs spin out and you realise you can't put any more power in the bike. Well, it doesn't happen very often. Um, I mean, the biggest gears, I think it's probably Tony Marston that we go up to a 58 big ring. But a lot of these guys would be using 56 if they, they've done, they've done the recon, 56-11. And if you're spinning that out, well, it's not going to make much difference for a 58 on. You'd actually waste too much energy trying to turn a gear that's that big when, right. as I said, it's... You're, you're better to try and make time up, go faster when it's hard, and just use those fast sections uh, to economise. Vincenzo Nibali is 22 seconds slower on the road than Wilco Kelderman, who is uh, looking like he might be the favourite to take the stage today at this point. And last time we heard, uh, Nibali was going faster than Chris Froome. In fact, confirmation that he's still technically faster than Chris Froome at this point, four seconds. So the gap's narrowed a little bit between uh, Nibali and Froome. 
but uh, all that does is reflect even better on Wilco Kelderman at this point. And still, we're not halfway through the individual time trial for the top riders in the GC. He's coming through the checkpoint now, 15, well, it'll look like 15.25-ish, uh, which makes him there or thereabouts with the time of Bob Yumels. Wait for confirmation to come through on our screens. Zacharine has gone through 15.16. So he's doing a, a fast time as Two well. Two seconds so. faster than Contador. So that was him second uh, on the road uh, at that time check, uh, going faster than Chris Froome as well. So Chris Froome is coming back and see that, because I doubt that anybody's slowing down. It's, I imagine that probably... Oh, there you go, this just catching a... It's meant Chavez, so Chavez is already being caught by Kelderman. That's going to destroy his morale. Vincenzo Nibali threw in 15.25, so 25 seconds slower than Kelderman, seven seconds slower than Alberto Contador, who we go forward to now, being cheered on by the crowd on the side of the road as the road just uh, rises up again and he has to punch over this climb. Kelderman looking much like his, his uh, teammate Tom Dumoulin here, uh, just a smaller version. Great ride. He gets onto Chavez's wheel, he'll go, well, he doesn't get onto Chavez's wheel, he'll have to sweep straight past him. Of course, he's not allowed to draft in an individual time trial. Closes the gap, he'll have to move to the side of the road, and he will just uh, rip past Esteban Chavez. Wilco Kelderman is having a great day. Former Dutch national time trial champion. A couple of years ago, when he took the scalp of Tom Dumoulin, that's how good he is. Chris Froome, in the meantime, now uh, approaches the checkpoint through 13 kilometers, 23 seconds slower than Wilco Kelderman, but parity with the likes of Contador and Nibali for Chris Froome through 13K. Back on board with Alberto Contador now, 32.47, he's got a target, don't forget, of Tobias Ludwigsen, 48.07 is the best time to take the stage victory, but Contador, of course he'd take a stage victory if it comes his way, he's much more interested in what he can do in the general classification. He needs to take 33 seconds on Woods, 35 on Aru, both those riders will be deeply under threat from Contador, 108 on Miguel Angel Lopez, that's not impossible, and 120 if he's on a really good day to this man you're looking at, Esteban Chavez, who has been caught and passed by his two-minute man, Wilco Kelderman. So 34-21, Ludwigsen is the fastest time at this second intermediate time, so we're going to get a, an idea if Contador is still carrying on that, that fast pace he's had since the beginning. Well, we'll get a time as and when we're allowed it uh, yeah. by the organisation. No idea. Still looks good, though, doesn't he, David? No yes, he does, no yeah. No visible signs of fatigue or anything from Contador at the moment. This is going to be um, an interesting one. They're 34.07, so fast and look some into the fastest uh, time at the second intermediate 34. It's probably going to be at 34.20, just scrape it in there, I think. Yeah, he's a lot there faster. There you go. F four seconds, so he's on a fly. We haven't seen Contador do a time trial like this in a long time. Kelderman curved back. It's not the straight back of Tom Dumoulin, is it? Different physique, demanding a different position on a bike. That's a lot of power through those legs. Chris Froome now, 12 seconds slower than Kelderman. That's a virtual reading. Get a better sense of uh, how well he is going when he finally gets through the second split time. And indeed, Kelderman does. At the moment, though, it's Contador who's set the best time at the second split. And the second split is 27.9 kilometers of this 40 kilometer time trial done. But that's a lot of time that Chris Froome's taken out of him. When we consider that Vincenzo Nibali at one point was, was 10 seconds faster than Chris Froome on the road. That means Chris Froome's taken 26 seconds out of him in a, in a relatively short space of time, probably in about six or seven kilometers, which does imply, uh, at least indicate, that Chris Froome was on a negative split tactic and, and really has taken that first section of the race uh, really within himself. This is, uh, is this Aru? We haven't seen much of Aru either. No. Here, here he is, yeah. So he's approaching 27.9 in the second uh, split point and he's 1 minute and 39 seconds down on Alberto Contador's time and that is going to be, uh, well, nowhere near good enough for Fabio Aru who's tumbling down the general classification at the end of the day. Pushing for the line now, TJ Van Garder and a uh, decent time trial from him. Good time. Is he going to be within 49 minutes? Just about. Very good time from uh, a man who goes well on his day but isn't necessarily suited to such a flat time trial. But that's good. 48 seconds down on uh, Tobias Ludwigsen's time. Not too bad for TJ Van Garder. Wilco Kelderman is honing in on the final checkpoint before the finish line. 
27.9 kilometers into the 40.2 kilometer time trial and he almost certainly will be setting the best time 34 17 to this point alberto contador had set the best time but kelderman has still got seconds in hand and not too many meters now i don't think as he swings around this roundabout one of a series closing in on this arch and uh will set by some distance the best time 33 is going to be comfortably within 34 minutes and that is a huge advantage now 27 seconds over alberto contador stops the clock at 33 50. wow that really is fast. Well, Froome is, he too now is going faster than Wilco Kelderman. So after a very moderate and conservative start, Chris Froome is starting to absolutely fly through this time trial. And if that's true, then um, that's a remarkable bit of pacing. That's huge if, uh, yeah, if this is correct. And it's hard to believe until he actually goes through that second time check. Because that would mean he's taken 30 seconds out of Kelderman. Well, here's a man the cameras haven't uh, picked out up to this point. It's Wout Pulse, and this is a good time. Tobias Ludwigsen, remember, 48.07, and he stops the clock in 48.11. That's provisional second place for Wout Pulse. Alberto Constor is now coming in. So let's see what's this. Probably one of the best time trials he's done in a very long time. 48.07, the time to beat from Tobias Ludwigsen. He is well into the barrier section. He is close. He's going to take the win. At, well, not the win. He's going to take the provisional first place, and he'll be on the hot seat by a few seconds. And he crosses the line. Alberto Contador has attacked his time trial, and he's come away with a good ride. The first ride is to go under 48 minutes just. And he'll have to sit there and watch what the rest of them can do. So no surprise that Contador has attacked it, and he's held his form all the way to the finish line. Will it be enough for the victory? I doubt that very much. Much, though, with Wilco Kelderman flying up the road, and so too is Ilno Zakarin. Good ride, though, from Contador. Now, this is a significant time gap. Look at that. Vincenzo Nibali to Wilco Kelderman, second to fourth. Uh, um, Vincenzo Nibali has got one minute and ten seconds to defend, and he's 31 seconds down. So, at the end of the day, if the race were to stop now, Kelderman would be round about 30 seconds, a little bit more, down on, um, on Vincenzo Nibali in second place, closing the gap right up. Yeah, that's not something we, I don't think any of us expected uh, before the start, but for Kelderman, this really is putting him in a serious podium, podium contention. Very much so. Despite the fact that Zacharin is riding extremely strong. I mean, that's the fact of the matter. Zacharin could be asked to do no more than he is doing. He's riding a brilliant time trial. It's just that the guy behind him in GC is even better. And what about this man? Is he going to extend his advantage in the red jersey and take stage win number two on the Vuelta? Well, you wouldn't want to bet against it at this point. This is a key moment. Let's see what time he sets here. 33.50, Kelderman's time. Froome is going to beat it, and he is seven seconds faster than Wilco Kelderman with, uh, what, just over 18 kilometres of his time trial to go. Wilco Kelderman now no longer the fastest man on the road. We know that because Chris Froome has gone seven seconds faster than him through the final checkpoint. So the red jersey now threatening Kelderman's dominance on the time trial to this point. Now, uh, he's got dual ambitions. Kelderman would dearly love a stage victory, but he's also got potential gains here, as he will see himself surely rising into third place and breathing down the neck, potentially, of Vincenzo Nibali in second place despite the fact that Zacharin is riding really well. It's all coming together, but this man is pulling away from everyone once again. It is phenomenal, Chris Froome, how he does this every time. You, you can't help but always have a little bit of doubt at the beginning when he's doing these negative splits, and yet it's always done with complete control and confidence. I mean, to, to be pulling this amount of time back on these riders in a tailwind in these conditions, I mean, it's, it really is. Uh, Phenomenal. I don't really have another word for it because it's the speed he must be doing, the gear he must, they must have set up this bike for, anticipating that these were the conditions uh, and then still be able to pull it off. It's, uh, it is impressive. Michael Woods from Canada, Draypack, who uh, we don't know too much about as a time trialist, and we're beginning to get an answer. This isn't his day today. Uh, a lot was. Uh, it placed on him by his own expectations of how well he might go in the mountains, but I think he feared today, and uh, he's fearing it with some justification as uh, he comes through now in 25th place, beginning to continuing to fall down the rankings and sustaining big, big losses to Alberto Contador. He only had 33 seconds to defend against the uh, man behind him in the general classification, and he has lost 
well. He Two and a half minutes much, so far. Much more than that. So uh, Woods will find himself, along with Fabio Aru, who's also not having a great day, the next man to come in after Woods, uh, dropping down the general classification. 50-40 for Michael Woods. As we go back to uh, Chris Froome, who's the fastest man through the second intermediate check. 27.9k uh, to go. He's gone faster than Wilco Kelderman. Fabio Aru, much like uh, Michael Woods, though, is dropping down the order. He has lost out to Alberto Contador. Contador will have overtaken him on the general classification by the end of the day. And he, too, will be lucky if he gets in in 50 minutes from here. So around about the same kind of time, a little bit faster than Michael Woods. Uh, but Fabio Aru doesn't like flat time trials, doesn't particularly like time trials, but this one very much not, not to his liking. He has ceded control of the leadership of Astana to the brilliant Miguel Angel Lopez, and he is dropping out of contention almost entirely now on the Vuelta. 50.03, 21st place, two minutes and four seconds down on Alberto Contador. And Miguel Angel Lopez, uh, like Fabio Aru, in fact, in a very, very similar kind of time to Fabio Aru, only now hits the barrier section. And... Uh, this is going to be in his young developing career, something that he's just simply, like Roman Bardet, like these pure climbers, going to have to improve if a uh, Grand Tour victory is going to come his way. He certainly doesn't have the, the build of a... Oh, look, and even the position he has, it doesn't look like they've worked much on it. So he will have... There is room to improve, I think, for him. Uh, and he's going to have to if he wants to be a contender in, in the GC in, in these upcoming years. Or someone's going to have to design a very friendly course for him. As uh, he stops the uh, clock, 1 minute and 35 seconds down. So faster than Fabio Aru, comfortably within 50 minutes. But uh, he's been passed by... Alberto Contador, who only needed to make up 108, and he's done that with something to spare. So Contador leapfrogs Miguel Angel Lopez in the general classification and continues to rise. He's dispatched with Woods, Aru, now Lopez, and uh, possibly Esteban Chavez too. Kelderman now less than one kilometre to go, and his target time is 47.59. That's the time that was set by Alberto Contador, who's the first man to go faster than that very, very impressive time by FTJ's Swedish time trialist, Tobias Ludvigsen. Formerly, of course, a teammate of Wilco Kelderman, a man he will have known very well uh, back in the days when this team was known as Giant Alpacin. But riding now for Team Sunweb. A couple of uh, switches to go, one right-hander, one left-hander still to come. 56-50, so he's got himself a minute still in the locker to get to the finish line and beat handsomely the time of Alberto Contador, and surely that is a foregone conclusion now. He's only got 500 metres to go. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, a fabulous time by Wilco Kelderman, and, and it really does announce his arrival on the on the stage, if you like, because up to now we know he's a great young hope, but to be doing this in the third week of a Grand Tour against the best GC races in the world, it's... Uh, it is a, an amazing ride. And this is a journey of discovery for him as well because Wilco Kelderman now knows what it's like to be riding high in the general classification on a Grand Tour and for a time trial to really mean something. And he's delivered a 30-second advantage over Alberto Contador and straight onto the hot seat with that result. Yeah, what a great time. And uh, look at her, how good he looks on the bike. I mean... You can't help but think this could be, he could be, along, along with Tom Dumoulin, one of the GC riders for the future. I mean, he's got a big week ahead of him, but still, already to be in this position, this deep into the race at, at his young age, it is uh, it's, uh, very exciting, for not only for us, but I think for Dutch cycling as a whole. And that is uh, confirmation of his time, 47.29, 30 seconds faster than Contador. That is a big chunk of time he has taken out of Alberto Contador. Chavez now uh, takes the applause, a popular rider, but up against it here in this time trial, facing some very, very committed, very specialised time trialists, the likes of Wilco Kelderman S S um, and Alberto Contador, who has taken a huge chunk of time out of Esteban Chavez. He only had 1 minute 20 to defend. He has not come close to defending that. 3 minutes and 32, he loses out to Wilco Kelderman. That means that he has lost 3 minutes and 2 seconds to Alberto Contador and tumbles down the general classification. Zacharin is uh, really going well here. He is at the moment not going to set the best time of Wilco Kelderman, but he's going to be mighty close to the time of Alberto Contador and might even finish in provisional second place. Where is that finish line? It's not going to come quite quick enough, I don't think, for Zacharin, but this is a brilliant time trial. Oh, Grand Tour, by far the best time trial of his career. And he finishes in a second place in the same time as Alberto Contador. And I've never seen Zacharin go as well as that on a Grand Tour. That's a great ride. Now, 
Let's look at Vincenzo Nibali. He's gone OK, he's dug in, he's held his form, he's kept everything together. And the big losses that might have incurred had he just gone too far into the red and exploded there have been avoided. That's a good ride from Vincenzo Nibali, who's continuing to prove strong, as we imagined that he would, going into the third week. 47-48, uh, second place, still just about a possibility for him. 47-59 for Zaccarin and Contador. An excellent ride from Vincenzo Nibali. He's going to cross the line in provisional second place. That'll probably be third place at the end of the day. But for the time being, he's second best to uh, Wilco Kelderman, and he loses 28 seconds only to the Dutchman. And that is a very good time trial. And just one rider remains, and he is the man in the red jersey in possession of the race lead. And he's a strong favourite now to take another stage win. Stage win number two on this edition of the Vuelta for Chris Froome in the red jersey. It was a time trial back in the 2011 Vuelta that really announced him as a rider with all this potential, but no one could have dreamed as that day he ended up in the red jersey that seven years later, or seven Vueltas later, he would be riding potentially to seal the deal and finally win that Vuelta. He takes the, the time trial in some style. He wins by 29 seconds over a brilliant Wilco Kelderman, but once again, Froome proving himself the master of the tactics, the master of pacing, quite, quite unbeatable. Whether the mountain rises, no one can shake him on the climbs, and in the time trial, he just turns the screw, and he has done it again. Yes, he has. So he's put a minute into most of the, the GC riders. Sonny Kelderman has come close, and it's come close. That's still 29 seconds uh, behind him. So that is a dominant performance by Chris Froome. And an excellent one by Wilco Kelderman, too. And the top five on the stage, Froome, Kelderman, Nibali, Zacharin, Contador, are now the top five overall, although not necessarily in that order. The only other member of this morning's top ten to finish top ten on the stage was Valt Poles, which was interesting, given that he's going to need all his strength to ride for Froome over the next four days. Miguel Angel Lopez was the best of the rest, or the least bad of them as far as the contenders went. He lost two and a half minutes to Froome, but took nearly half a minute from Fabio Aru. Michael Woods conceded three minutes 40 to the race leader, and Esteban Chavez a second over four minutes. We'll go 29 seconds from Chris Froome, a lot of time gained on Vincenzo Nibali, Contador, you must be thrilled with that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, it was a hard time trial. The beginning was uh, really nice up and down, and. Ooh, then it was uh, hard a little bit down and side wind, so for the arms it was also hard to, to stay uh, really in a straight line. And, uh, it was a really hard time trial. I'm happy that uh, when I, if I'm that I'm being second, but also a little bit disappointed to not win the TT. But I'm really happy to gain time, of course. Do you defend your podium place now, or do you go for broke? I will see uh, tomorrow is again hard. Uh, see how the legs will be tomorrow and. Uh, I will, uh, I will fight every day, so uh, I defend always my place. Alberto, how good does it feel to know that you've put yourself through the pain of a time trial for the last time? Ah, I feel OK. This, this morning, well, yesterday, asked to me in the press conference that will be your last time. I said, oh, yeah, it's true. And yeah, it was OK. For me, this Vuelta is incredible, of course. Uh, I won are in other uh, position in the GC, but I know that after the, the bad day in Andorra, every day it was different, and I attack when I want. And OK, I, ha I have now, we have now uh, uh, four days very hard in front, and we will do what we can do. There was a lot of era era fondamentale tenere sempre l'andatura alta e, e non era facile. Il vento era laterale e continuava a spostarmi sempre. Eh, sono abbastanza leggero quindi non era facile mantenere la velocità alta sono dei tratti che si andava quasi anche da, da 60 a 80 all'ora circa la forma rimane ottima in vista degli, degli ultimi giorni Beh, penso che la prestazione della crono parla abbastanza bene dai vediamo è veramente difficile riuscire a battere from so, two stage wins for Chris Froome now, one uphill, one against the clock to underline his all-round dominance in this race, as evidenced by his dominance of the podium appearances. There are points for time trial placings in the Vuelta, and he took 25 to extend his lead over Matteo Trentin. He also leads the combined rankings, although he's yet to be seen wearing the white jersey other than post-stage, because, of course, he's wearing the red of overall leader, as he has been since the end of stage three.
And his lead is now 1 minute 58 over Vincenzo Nibali, with Wilco Kelvin up to third ahead of Ilnor Zakarin and Alberto Contador fifth at 4.58. Miguel Angel Lopez and Fabio Aru stay sixth and seventh. Esteban Chavez falls the furthest from fifth to ninth, behind Val Poles now and ahead of Michael Woods. I think pacing was uh, really key today. Uh, I think a lot of guys started too hard with, with a lot of climbs earlier on and perhaps faded towards the end, whereas I think I, I, I paced it relatively well, first part and second part, pretty much the same kind of speed, but I think um, just managed to hang on to it there. I wasn't getting a lot of information out on the road. I, I don't know if, uh, if there was a lot of information available. So I actually presumed the worst and thought maybe it's not going so well. They don't really want to tell me in the car that it's not going too well. Uh, so it was it was an amazing amazing surprise in the last few Ks to to hear that I was I was uh, fighting for the stage win. You've talked a lot about strategy and making calculations in this world. Has that been a real theme of this race for you, and a real theme of this point in your career? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think I mean the team, the support team is a, is a huge part of that, and obviously my coach Tim Kerrison as well, um, being able to to help me with the pacing strategies and things like that. It's been a massive part of my racing strategy on the road and obviously in, in a time trial like today. And it has to be a theme as well tomorrow, Los Machucos? Yeah, Los Machucos is a, is a brutal climb. I mean, it's a, it's a wall. Once we hit it, it, it ramps of over 20, 25 percent. Um, it, it's brutal, absolutely brutal. So tomorrow's going to be a big day of racing. Um, four big days left now until, until we uh, hit the last stage into Madrid. So just going to take it one day at a time now and uh, I mean, the team's been fantastic, so hopefully, uh, hopefully we, can, we can hang on to it now. 